guys feel about how you performed in your first two playoff games and what's been kind of inside the locker room or on the practice field, the challenge that you guys have kind of put forth to each other about playing a complete game on Sunday? Yeah, it was always bittersweet uh, for both those games, you know, because obviously you're so happy and excited that you won the game and you're able to advance and doing the things necessary to win the game, but also knowing that that's not our standard, you know, for defensive play that ever since I've been here. Uh, you know, and so that's that's something that's been a point of emphasis. I think we obviously have to play our best game going into this going into this game uh, to have a chance to, to win it all. And, uh, you know, we've been trying to shore things up and making sure we're preparing as hard as we can. Fred, along those lines, uh, John Lynch and Steve Wilkes said that some of the effort was handled internally. And Kyle just said that you guys have players that are OK being told what to do. With that in mind, have you seen a shift? And is that what makes this team get better and better? That People are not afraid to be criticized. Yeah, I love our mindset right now. I think guys are going about the work the exact right way this week. You know, that has been handled in-house. And, uh, you know, I think we'll be ready to go and, and fully prepared for Sunday. Third left. Fred, Zach Swartz here with the Big 12. Uh, obviously didn't play in the Big 12, but how excited uh, are you to see BYU step up um, into that conference and, and watch them continue to compete. And, and would you be willing to say that you are a member of the Big 12 at this point? <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I do claim them now, obviously being a BYU Cougar and um, super excited and, and always cheering for them going into the Big 12 and being able to compete with the best. I think that was the plan all along, was wanting to compete at the highest level. And so uh, I'm always rooting for them. Hi, Fred, you're right. Um, would you get an announcement about a game in Madrid coming up? Is that something you'd like to be a part of as a player? And what do you make of the continued international expansion of the NFL? The Eagles were recently announced as a designated team for the game in Sao Paulo. Yeah, I think that'd be awesome. Uh, you know, anytime we get to play international, I think playing last year in Mexico was a, a super awesome experience to be a part of. Playing in Madrid would be awesome. And just any time we can continue to expand the fan base outside of the U.S., it's, it's always a, a great deal. Hi, Fred. Good afternoon. Federico Olvera from Mexico. Oh, thank you. Hey, uh, what's Mike uh, Shanahan leadership style like, and how does he motivate you guys, uh, mainly uh, that the ones who played uh, four years ago uh, against the Chiefs in the Super Bowl? Yeah, Coach Kyle, he's, uh, he's a great head coach. Obviously, the best that I've been around, the only uh, NFL head coach I've been around, but uh, he's been awesome. And the way that he coaches is just super honest and, um, you know, just knows how to completely paint the picture through the tape. You know, it's not just, just saying words. He shows you exactly what it's supposed to look like, what it's not supposed to look like. And he's just such a, a brilliant mind to be able to teach football uh, offensively, defensively, and special teams to allow us to be well prepared for each and every game. I, how, congratulations. Um, Thank you. I wanted to ask, you've, you've been around a lot. You've been there, done that. In a game like this where there are so many different variables this week, the Super Bowl halftime show being longer, I mean, how can you, having been there, done that, yourself impact the rest of the, the, the locker room who might not have been there and done that before? Yeah, I mean, I was blessed the first time around <clears throat> back in 2019, 2020 Super Bowl to be around a – around a lot of really great veterans, a lot of really great leaders, you know, Richard Sherman, Joe Staley, you know, guys that had been there and done it and kind of, you know, hearing from them how the game was and le the, the week leading up to it, you know, had me fully prepared as just a young second year player. You know, I felt like I was fully prepared for the moment. Uh, and this time around being able to be that veteran now, uh, having gone through it um, and knowing that like, what it's going to take, you know, because I've been on the other side of it where we, we were sad at the end of it. You know, now I want to be on the on the right side of things. So just kind of just reiterating the guys to stay focused. Obviously, all this stuff is cool and all, but, you know, we still got to play football at, at the end of the day on Sunday. Mm. Fred, obviously, you have your own defensive rules that dictate coverages, but when you're dropping back into coverage in the middle of the field and it's Patrick Mahomes, how much does he – change the calculus in terms of like when how how deep you drop how tight you squeeze those windows with what everything, everything he can do with the ball yeah I mean he's just a really special player I think the things that he does 
uh, you know, playing and play out. He obviously can do a lot of different things in terms of extending the play. He has a great connection with his players, you know, specifically Travis and knowing exactly where he's going to be, finding open space. And so, you know, you might be more used to having your eyes on the quarterback and being able to read him, but, you know, you're going to you're gonna have a, you have to have awareness for where the receivers are uh, on the field at all times. And, you know, he's obviously going to break the pocket and do those sort of things, being able to plaster guys late in the down. It's like playing two down, two different plays in one. You know, that's what makes it so hard with him. Um, good afternoon, uh, Daniel Ocelli for La Ferrada in Mexico. Um, you've played long enough in the NFL to sense and feel when a momentum shift is coming. It happened a couple of times for you guys positively on the playoffs. Uh, how does Coach Shanahan deal with it when it's coming your way, when it's happening your way? And how does he deal with it when he sends it going the other way? When you feel the other team get a momentum shift, get a break, how does he handle that? And how do you handle it on the sideline with the more unexperienced players? Yeah, I think momentum is real. It's a real thing. Uh, I don't think it's all on one person at all. You know, Coach, Coach Shanahan, you know, he has a job to do out there just as every single other person out there has to do. Um, you know, I think for me, just continuing to keep the guy's head, uh, keep the head straight on during the game, regardless of, the, of what's going on. You got to worry about the next play. You can't think about what's happened in the past in the game. Uh, the only thing that you can affect is, is whatever that next play going forward. You know, we have a next play, best play mentality, regardless of where we're at in the game. And I think when we do that, we have the best results possible. Hi, Fred. Uh, American football community, Belgium. Um, you haven't missed uh, a game in your career. They say that the best ability is availability. How does that contribute to your success uh, as a player and a leader of the defense? You know, I wish that was uh, I wish that was fully true. I had missed one game back in 21. I, you know, that was that was hard for me. I tried to come back that week. I had, had a strained hamstring, uh, but that is my one blemish. Um, you know, I think it, it's been awesome. I've been blessed, you know, by the man upstairs to to be able to stay available, stay healthy, as well as you know, learning how to take care of my body. You know, from from early on in my career, being around great veterans and learning uh, about what it's going to take to, to be a, a, a good player in this league. You know, obviously you can have all the talent in the world, you can work your tail off, but if you're not available on the field and you're hurt, you're constantly in the training room, you'll never be able to continue to get better by getting those reps day in and day out. So uh, I take a lot of pride in that. Hey, Fred, uh, from the outside looking in, you and George are two of the emotional team leaders for this you know, organization. One, what type of leader is George in the locker room? And two, where did you develop the leadership skills to lead the defense in and out of battle each and every week? Yeah, George is an outstanding leader um, just because of who he is. <clears throat> it's not necessarily, you know, every, with each guy who I guess is considered a leader on the team, it's not about what, what you're saying. It's about how you, who you are and how you show up every single day. The consistency that, that George has shown throughout his career uh, with the level of play that he's played with, the, the, the level of competitive, uh, the competitive nature that he brings every single day. You know, obviously he has a love for the game, a love for life. You know, you see that every single day and how he, how he uh, you know, just operates. But, um, you know, I'm really happy that he's on our team because he does, he does bring up the level of play for everybody. I think that's what a good leader does. You know, for me, I've learned from a lot of great leaders, just like I mentioned before, uh, with guys that I've been around. And I just try to do exactly what I just said, is be consistent day in and day out. You know, I want, I want my, my work to speak for itself, not, not just my words. I want, to, I want people to, to lead by example. Hi, Fred. Uh, Ricardo Lopez from Mundo NFL. What's the key or the secret to stop an extremely creative play caller as Andy Reid? Yeah, I guess that's that's what we're trying to figure out right now, all the way up to Sunday. You know, we're trying to figure out that that the answer to that question. And you know, I, I can speak to Coach Reed. You know, a feller BYU Cougar. Uh, he's he's been he's been obviously really great in this league for a long time. Uh, such a you know creates such uh, unique plays. Uh, you know, with, with his players that he has on his team. And so there's going to be times in the game where we see looks that we haven't seen before, and we just got to play throughout the down. Um, but yeah, we're, we're still working all the way up to Sunday to figure that out. Hi, Fred. Um, what are some characteristics that Brock Purdy has that you think the whole team benefits from? Um, I mean, there's, there's too many to choose from, honestly. I think the thing that stands out the most about Brock, you know, for, for us as his teammates is, you know, just the, the pure humility uh, that, he, that he plays with, that he uh, comes to work with every single day. You know, he doesn't let the outside noise affect him any 
at all. Like, it affects me more than it affects him, like, seeing things that people say about him. But, like, he's just made of the right stuff. You know, he's focused on the things that are going to allow him to continue to get better in this league. Um, to, to say that what he's doing right now, you know, in his second year as the last pick of the draft last year is, I mean, you can't say enough about it. It's amazing. Um, I'm so happy for him. I'm so happy he's on our team, and he's the reason why we have a chance to win a Super Bowl. Hey, Fred. Yep. So uh, talk about the value of having Coach Holland, what he's taught you, how he's helped elevate your game over the years, and how having, you know, you and Drake, Le uh, Drake Greenlaw, how that kind of maybe helps you open up what you can do on defense. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm so grateful for, for Johnny Holland uh, as my linebacker coach. You know, I can't say enough about what he's meant to me and what he's meant to our group, uh, you know, our linebacking group. What he goes through day in and day out, you never know that anything was wrong. Obviously, he's, he has his battle with cancer right now, and uh, you would never know it because of the positivity and the energy that he brings day in and day out. And he's been such a, a, a pivotal piece in my development as a player from the moment I got here because he just showed a lot of confidence in me from, from being a young pup and to being where I'm at now. His thing is about instilling confidence in his players because uh, he sees what you know confidence can do for you know bringing a good player and making them great. So. Uh, he's helped me to, you know, achieve the things that I've achieved up to this point. And I think you mentioned something about Dre Greenlaw. And, you know, Dre, again, I can't, I can't speak enough about how important Dre is. Like, I'm not the player I am without having Dre Greenlaw next to me. You know, he doesn't get the, the respect or, you know, any of the admiration that he deserves. But he doesn't care. All he cares about is playing football, going out there and hitting people, you know, and towing the line. But, uh, you know, I, I love that about him, and I love having that out there on the field with me. He makes he makes our defense way better than if had he not had, when he's not out there. You know what I'm saying? So really grateful to have him out there.